Good afternoon. My name is Craig Coughlin. I have the great privilege of representing the 19th Legislative District, and I'd like to take this moment to thank you all for coming out on this special and important day. And a word to the families and friends, especially the children of the new members. Today's a really big day. Make sure you enjoy it, and be very proud of your mom and dad. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the New Jersey State Police Pipe Band and the members of the 217th General Assembly. Ladies and gentlemen, the New Jersey State Police Pipe Band. I'd like to call this meeting to order. This being the time fixed for the beginning of the legislative session, the General Assembly of the State of New Jersey is now called to order to affect the organization for the conduct of its business for the first annual session of the 217th legislature. is the certification of election. I, Kimberly M. Guadano, Secretary of State and Chief Election Official of the State of New Jersey, do hereby certify that an election was held on the third day of November 2015. The following persons were elected members of the General Assembly to represent the State of New Jersey in the 217th Legislature. From the first district, Bob Andrejack, R. Bruce Land. Second district, Chris Brown and Vince Mazio. Third District, John Berzicelli and Adam Telefero. Fourth District, Paul D. Moriarty and Gabriella Mascara. Fifth District, Arthur Barclay and Patricia Egan Jones. Sixth di District, Louis D. Greenwald, Pamela R. Lampett. Seventh District, Herb Conaway, Troy Singleton. Eighth District, Maria Rodriguez Gregg and Joe Howarth. Ninth District, Brian E. Rumpf 
Diane C. Gove, oh, 10th District, Dave Wolf, Gregory P. McGuckin, 11th District, Eric Hotelling, Joanne Downey, 12th District, Ronald S. Dancer, Robert D. Clifton, 13th District, Amy Hanlon, Declan O'Scanlon, 14th District, Wayne P. D'Angelo, Daniel R. Benson, 15th District, Reed Gusiora, Elizabeth Mayer Moyo, 16th District, Jack M. Cetarelli, Andrew Zwicker, 17th District, Joseph V. Egan, Joseph F. Danielson, 18th District, Patrick J. Dognan, Jr., Nancy Pinkin, 19th District, John S. Wisniewski, Craig J. Coughlin, 20th District, Annette Keanu, Jamal Jamel Holly, 21st District, John Bramnick, Nancy Munoz, 22nd District, Gerald Jerry Green, James J. Kennedy, 23rd District, Eric Peterson, John DeMeo, 24th District, F. Parker Space, Gail Phoebus, 25th District, Michael Patrick Carroll, Anthony M. Bucco, 26th District, J. Weber, Mary Lou DeCroach, 27th District, John F. McKeon, Myla M. Jacy, 28th District, Cleopatra G. Tucker, Ralph R. Caputo, 29th District, L. Grace Spencer, Elena Pinter Marin, 30th District, Sean T. Kane, David P. Ribel, 31st District, Angela V. McKnight, Nicholas Chevrolade, 32nd District, Vincent Prieto, Angelica Jimenez, 33rd District, Raj Mukherjee, Anit, I'm sorry, Annette Chiaparo, 34th District, Sheila Y. Oliver, Thomas P. Giblin, 35th District, Shivanda E. Sumter, Benji E. Wimberly, 36th District, Gary Shear, Marlene Caride, 37th District, Gordon M. Johnson, Valerie Veneri Huddle, 38th District, Tim Eustace, Joseph Lagana, 39th District, Holly Shapizi, Robert Auth, and 40th District, David C. Russo, and Scott T. Romano. This was sealed by the hand, of, by the official seal in Trenton on the first day of December 2015, signed by Kimberly M. Guadano, Lieutenant Governor and Secretary of State. Congratulations. And now please let us welcome Pastor Victor P. Kennedy of Immaculate Conception Church in Secaucus to deliver the invocation. Please rise and join Pastor Kennedy and I ask you to remain standing after the invocation. Join your prayers with mine. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your goodness, you have awakened all creation in your presence. You called all things to life. From the beginning, men and women have gathered together in community to take care of the future, to take care of each other, to take care of the hopes and dreams. Today is such an assembly. As we gather with the people of New Jersey, the ones that we've elected and put forth to take care of the needs, Father, we ask that you bless them. Give them the gift of memory. May they always remember who elected them. Give them the gift of knowledge. May they come to know the needs of their people. Give them the gift of wisdom so that they can authentically take care of those needs. And Father, give them strength and courage because you know how tough it is to take care of your people. And finally, when their time is done, may they return home with pride because they have taken care of the lives, the liberties, and the happiness of the people of New Jersey. We say this prayer as children of one God, sons and daughters made in his image and likeness. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Kennedy. The New Jersey State Police Color Guard will now present the colors.
Please join me in saying the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please remain, remain standing for our national anthem, which will be performed by Angela Marie Cirillo. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangle Banner yet wave O'er the land of the free And the home of the brave okay. I'd like to take a moment to welcome some of the dignitaries who were kind enough to join us today. You can be seated. Nah, second thought, stand up. No, I'm only kidding. Uh, we're fortunate to have with us today former Speaker Joseph Doria. Speaker Doria. Former Speaker Jack Collins. And representing uh, Governor Byrne, his wife, Ruthie Byrne. If there are any other dignitaries, that's what you get for being late. We don't have your name on the list. Uh, the oath of office will now be administered to the newly elected members of the New Jersey General Assembly. Um, first, uh, Speaker Prado, you want to join us? Administer the oath. And our first uh, new assemblyman will be Assemblyman Bruce Land from the 1st District. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith. And I will bear true faith. And allegiance. And allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this date, under the authority of the people, in the authority of the people, and that I will faithfully discharge, I will faithfully discharge the duties of the duties of member of the General Assembly, member of the General Assembly, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Next, from the 5th Legislative District, Arthur Barclay. Raise 
Raise your right hand. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith. And I will bear true faith and allegiance. And allegiance to the same. To the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state, under the authority of the people, under under the authority of the people, and that I will faithfully discharge, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the duties of member of the General Assembly, member of the General Assembly, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. From the 8th Legislative District, newly elected Assemblyman Joe Howarth. I state your name. I, Joe Howarth. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith. And that I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. And to the governments established. And to the governments established. In the United States and in this state. In the United States and in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully, and I will faithfully discharge the duties, discharge the duties of member of the General Assembly, of member of the General Assembly, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Thank Assembly. You. From the 11th District, newly elected Assemblywoman Joanne Downey. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of. The duties of. Member of the general. Assembly, member of the General Assembly, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> From the eleventh district. Eric Hotelling. Big crowd. Yeah, it's all right. You bring people. <laughs> this guy's waiting to have enough room off stage for everybody. <laughs> stand, stand over here. And then everybody, no, no, you stand right here. If you're holding. I, I do solemnly swear. 
I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully discharge. That I will faithfully discharge the duties of the duties of member of the General Assembly. Assembly, member of the General Assembly, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Assemblyman. From the 16th Legislative District, Assemblyman Andrew Zwicker. Now you know why you won. <laughs> I do solemnly affirm. I do solemnly affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. To the same. And the governments established in the United States. And the governments established in the United States. And in this state and in this state under the authority of the people under the authority of the people and that i will faithfully discharge and that i will faithfully discharge the duties of the duties of member of the general assembly member of the general assembly to the best of my ability to the best of my ability congratulations thank you so much From the 27th Legislative District, James Kennedy. Solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of. The duties of. Member of the General Assembly. Member of the General Assembly. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. From the 31st Legislative District, Nicholas Chevrolet.
I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the States, Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. To the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of. The duties of member of the General Assembly. Member of the General Assembly. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Welcome aboard. Thank Good you. Time. From the 31st Legislative District, Assemblywoman Angela McKnight. I do solemnly swear. I do so solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. To the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of people. And that I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of the duties of member of the general assembly member of a general assembly to the best of my ability to the best of my ability so help me god so help me god congratulations From the 33rd Legislative District, Assemblywoman Annette Chaparro. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. To the same. And the governments established in the United States. Government established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I would faithfully discharge. The duties of. The duties of. Member of the General Assembly. Member of the General Assembly. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Speaker Prieto will now administer the oath to the remaining members. Everybody raise your right hand. I do solemnly swear, I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and in this state under the authority of the people and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of member of the General Assembly to the best of my ability. So help me God. Congratulations, everybody.
Nominations are now in order for a temporary chair. I recognize the Assemblywoman from Bergen County, Assemblywoman Valerie Veneri Huddle. But first, we're going to congratulate each other. <laughs> Assemblywoman Veneri Huddle. I nominate for Assemblywoman Veneri Huddle nominates Assemblyman Gary Shear of Passaic County. Assemblyman Berzicelli, why do you rise? Rise to second the nomination. <laughs> if there are no other nominations, the chair will entertain a motion that the nominations be closed by Assemblywoman Myla Jacy. I move the nominations be closed. Hearing no objections, it is so ordered. All those in favor of the nomination of Assemblyman Shear as temporary chairman signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Con congratulations, Assemblyman Chair. Resolution on the clerk's desk. General Assembly 2016 Organizational Resolution. Assemblyman Egan, why do you rise? I move to waive the reading by the clerk. Copies of the Assembly's Organizational Resolution have been distributed to the members. Hearing no objections, all those in favor of the motion say aye. All those opposed, nay, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. Assemblyman Wisniewski, why do you rise? I rise to move the resolution. Assemblyman Spencer, why do you rise? I rise to second the motion. On the resolution, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, nay, the ayes have it, and the resolution passes. Nominations are now in order for the clerk of the assembly. I recognize Assemblyman McCann from Essex County. I nominate Dana M. Burley of Camden County to serve as clerk of the New Jersey General Assembly for the 217th session. Assemblyman Dignan, why do you rise? I rise to second the motion. If there are no other nominations, the chair will entertain a motion that nominations be closed. Assemblywoman Mascara, please. I move that nominations be closed. Hearing no objections, so ordered on the election of Dana M. Burley to serve as clerk of the New Jersey General Assembly. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Assemblywoman Lampett will administer the oath of office to the clerk of the New Jersey General Assembly to Dana M. Burley. I do solemnly promise and swear. I do solemnly promise and swear that I will faithfully, that I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly perform, and justly perform all the duties of the office of clerk, all the duties of office of clerk, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, and understanding, and understanding that I will carefully preserve, that I will carefully preserve all records, papers, all records and papers, writings. Or Writing or property entrusted or property entrusted to me for safekeeping to me for safekeeping by the virtue of my office by the virtue of my office and make such disposition and make such disposition of the same of the same as may be required by law as may be required by law congratulations thank you Nominations for Speaker Pro Tempore of the Assembly are now in order. I recognize Assemblyman Johnson from Bergen County. I nominate Assemblyman Gerald Green of Union County. Assemblyman Conaway, why do you rise? I rise to second the motion. If there are no other nominations, the chair will entertain a motion that nominations be closed. Assemblyman Gusiara. I move that the nominations for Speaker Pro Temp be closed. Hearing no objections, so ordered on the election of Gerald Green to serve as Speaker Pro Tempore of the New Jersey General Assembly. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. <laughs> Speaker Prieto will now administer the oath of office to Majority Leader Lewis Greenwald of Camden County.
I do solemnly promise and swear. I do solemnly promise and swear that I will faithfully that I will faithfully impartially impartially and justly impartially and justly perform all the duties of perform all the duties of majority leader of the New Jersey General Assembly majority leader of the New Jersey General Assembly to the best of my ability and the, understanding to the best of my ability and understanding and that I will ca carefully preserve all records and that I will carefully preserve all records papers writings papers writings or properties entrusted to me or properties entrusted to me for safekeeping for safekeeping by virtue of my office by virtue of my office and make such disposition of the same and make such disposition of the same as it may be required by law as may be required by law that I will support the Constitution of the United States that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of New Jersey and the Constitution of the state of New Jersey and that I will bear true faith and allegiance and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same to the same and the governments established in the United States and to the governments established in the United States and in this state and in this state under the authority of the people under the authority of the people so help me God so help me God congratulations Thank you. Thank you so very much. I want to thank my family because without them, none of this would be possible. Your love, your support, most of all your patience allow me to serve in this very important role. I have a tremendous pride in my children, as any father would, but my quiet joy is not watching their personal accomplishments or talents but their use of those talents to serve others in a true commitment and passion to serve others before themselves. It's an affirmation that my life of public service, their grandmother's life of public service, and our approach to government has been noticed and embraced by them. You are an inspiration to me. You are the pride of your mother and myself, and I love you very, very much. It's hard for me to believe that today as I stand here, I start my 11th term in the legislature. It is my 21st year in the assembly and about to enter my third term as this legislature's majority leader. Yet I have the same excitement today as I did when I stood on this very stage on January 11th, 1996, when I took my first oath of office. I have an unshakable belief that we can change this state for the better. I have an unshakable confidence that together there is no problem we cannot solve. I know this to be true. I know it in my bones. While we're not always elegant and seamless, I have watched us achieve this level of success. Today is a day of celebration. It is a day in which we welcome new members of our house to this position of great responsibility. Today is also a day of ceremony. It's a day in which we observe the peaceful transfer of government from one legislature to the next, under the solemn directives of our Constitution. Ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake, today is also a crossroads. While we have worked hard and solved pressing problems over the course of the last two years, significant challenges remain, as they always will. And many of those challenges are reaching a breaking point. Our highest in the nation property taxes continue to be the route from which so many of our state's economic challenges continue to grow. Our crushing property tax burden smothers a fragile economic recovery, it stifles our ability to compete with our neighbors, and it drives residents out of our state year after year. This oppressive property tax system does not discriminate. It harms senior citizens, college graduates, and middle class families without question and without mercy. And New Jersey's property tax crisis has sown the seeds from which other challenges facing our state have grown. A broken pension system, now billions of dollars in debt, jeopardizing hardworking men and women, their retirements and their security. Broken roads and straining bridges go unattended, crumbling further on a daily basis and threatening the health of our economy and the lives of our families. A transportation trust fund desperately in need of an infusion of capital. Moms and dads struggling around kitchen tables forced to choose between saving for a college fund and making a mortgage payment. Atlantic City, once New Jersey's jewel on the ocean, faces a daily struggle of survival. Patterson, Camden, Newark, and Trenton continue to see a lack of opportunity for good jobs, 
and quality education for residents. So staring in the face of these monumental challenges, why should we be optimistic? Where does my excitement and my passion come from? My excitement and my energy is rooted in the principle that we were not sent here to complain about the difficulty of the task at hand. We were not sent here to wring our hands or shrug our shoulders or kick cans down the road for future generations because these are tough problems. Look, if every vote we ever had on the assembly floor passed 80 to nothing, there would really be no need for this legislative body. The voters across New Jersey from every corner of our state sent us here to make difficult choices. They sent us here to exercise judgment and leadership. They have placed their confidence and their trust in those of us present on this stage to help navigate our state through choppy and uncertain waters. When I turn around and look into the faces of the men and women behind me who are ready to take up the call and fight to make New Jersey a better place to call home, I believe. I am immensely proud to stand before you today as the majority leader because of the caliber of, legislature, of the legislators with whom I share this stage, legislators who exemplify the spirit and goals of this history-making delegation. I was recently asked in an interview about my role as majority leader. I believe my role as majority leader is to lead a caucus of 52 different individual personalities and find common purpose with people of different beliefs but a shared goal. I know I can do this. I love the joy it gives me when it is done right. This is a delegation that believes no senior should have to worry about whether she can afford next month's prescription medication. This is a delegation that believes no veteran should have to sleep shivering in the street or wondering where his next meal is coming from. This is a delegation that believes my daughters shouldn't have to look at their paychecks and wonder why they don't earn as much as my son for doing the same job. This is a delegation that knows health care should not be dependent on the size of your bank account or the names in your Rolodex, but believes access to quality health care is a fundamental right of every citizen and not just a privilege. This is a delegation that knows that women's health matters, that it is not a choice to fund revenue for life-saving screenings for breast cancer, cervical cancer, and other serious conditions, but it is a moral obligation of all of us who serve. And while I know the discussion of gun reform legislation creates anxiety within our political circles, I also know that each and every one of us watch in anguish in the streets and the communities that look just like ours as we watch another memorial service with a grieving father clutching the picture of their lost son. We are all united in a sorrow and a desire to ensure that these tragedies are never repeated. These are shared fears of parents of Sandy Hook who wept in my office at the loss of their children. These are shared fears and concerns of every resident of every community in our state. Our mission should be to overcome these fears and solve these problems. My role, our role, is to not just roll up our sleeves, but to reach out our hands across the political divide and find common purpose with people of different views and beliefs in a shared goal to solve these problems. When I think about the difficulty and the difficult issues that face our state today, I am comforted to know that the members of this delegation, both Republican and Democrat, will not back down, but will stand up to tackle the task at hand. I look behind me at some of my caucus members who are leading that way. I think of Patrick Dignan, who leads our education committee with a sharp intellect and a true grace, who understands that our school should not just be about creating a series of test scores or statistics, but they are about helping to shape and nurture young men and women who will grow to lead businesses, nonprofits, and perhaps even sit on this stage someday. I think of Wayne D'Angelo, an electrician who knows what it means when we talk about the need to fix our infrastructure and create projects that put people to work. I think of Joe Lagana, who in his first term in the assembly charged headfirst to attack the devastating epidemic of heroin addiction that poisons too many young lives and tears too many families apart. He didn't worry about polling or easy sound bites when he took up his fight. Joe fights this fight because it was simply the right thing to do. I think of Grace Spencer, a new mother, who uses her considerable legal intellect and courtroom experience not only as a practicing attorney, but who wields these gifts as a steadfast advocate for justice and fairness for all on the floor of the assembly. I think of Benji Wimberly, a teacher by trade, who has dedicated his life to mentoring young men and women in the city of Patterson and to achieve their full potential. New Jerseyans know the difficulty of the challenges we face. 
They want a government that keeps its promises, a government that doesn't quit or fall to partisan bickering when the going gets tough. They want a government that looks like, sounds like, and embodies the spirits of the people it represents. It is why I also look into the hearts of my friends, Declan O'Scanlan, Sean Kane, and John Bramnick. I know the best that I have achieved in my political life has come when we have worked together. I know that when Sean Kane and I tackled a crushing, broken water infrastructure problem, we, we improved the environment of this state and put thousands of people to work. I know when Declan O'Scanlan and I worked to fix arbitration reform, we leveled a playing field for fairness and property tax relief. And I know in May, when President Obama came to Camden and, and pointed to Camden as a national model of urban economic recovery, it was the work of my friend John Bramnick and I on the Economic Opportunity Act that helped create that a reality. Ladies and gentlemen, it is in those moments that I know that working together, we are better than when we stand alone. And most recently, last night, when my friend Vinnie Prieto worked tirelessly throughout the night as we left here at 2 o'clock in the morning to ultimately bring a decades-old problem to a conclusion when we created the expansion of gaming in New Jersey, where we will now create tens of thousands of jobs. We will stabilize an industry that has so struggled over the last decade. We will return a previous historic city to its one-time greatness. We will stop the cannibalization of the gaming industry from our borders, and we will restore economic recovery to this state. New Jersey families are tired of politicians who pander to the division and the divisive politics of yesterday instead of leading us together towards a better tomorrow. As I traveled around the state last year from Paramus to Freehold to Vineland, the conversations were always the same. Can you please help? I'm afraid. I lost my job. I don't know that I can afford my property taxes. I'm afraid I may have to move away from my family. Using common sense solutions to combat gun violence, we can address these problems. We can address a crumbling infrastructure. We can address uh, investing in our young people. We can address providing real property tax relief for the families of this state. These issues are at the center of some of the most important public policy debates we face today. They are not just campaign issues. They are issues that matter to millions of residents of our state. We know these challenges will not simply wilt in the face of our resolve. We know that solutions will not be easy to find. And we certainly know that the true change will not happen unless we make it happen. True change won't be found in a vote of 80 to nothing on the assembly floor. It will be closer than that. It will be far closer than that. It will gnaw at the political sensibilities. Within that uncertainty and that discomfort will come the root of true change and the foundation of strong public policy and a better future for our children and my children. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot of work to do for the people who sent us here. It is time for us to roll up our sleeves. It is time for us to reach across the aisle. It is time for us to work together and continue to tackle the problems of this great state. Thank you, God bless you, and God continue to bless the great state of New Jersey. Thank you very much. Thank you, Majority Leader. Assemblyman Prieto will now administer the oath of Office of Minority Leader to Assemblyman John Bramnick of Union County. I do solemnly promise and swear. I do solemnly promise and swear that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of perform all the duties of minority leader of the New Jersey General Assembly minority leader of the New Jersey General Assembly to the best of my ability and understanding to the best of my ability and understanding 
and that I will ca carefully preserve all records. And I will carefully preserve all records. Papers, writings. Papers, writings. Or property entrusted to me. Or property entrusted to me. For safekeeping. For safekeeping. By virtue of my office. By virtue of my office. And make such disposition of the same. And make such disposition of the same. As may be required by law. As may be required by law. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. And I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. To the same. And the governments established in the United States. And the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, Speaker. Good afternoon, everyone. Let me start by thanking my wife, Patricia, of 35 years, who reminds me every day, it's not about you. It's about the community. And that's what you need to focus on, to help someone each and every day. And that's what we all should do. And today, I'm with my son, my daughter, my daughter-in-law, and at home, my one-year-old grandchild, Lacey, Brentano Bramnick, and so please send her my best. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Majority Leader Greenwald, Conference Leader Rybal, Whip Romana, Budget Officer O'Scanlan, distinguished guests and fellow New Jerseyans, happy 2016 to everybody. Today I'll guarantee you one thing about New Jersey's political future. It will not be boring. Whether we are productive, that is not so clear. On that note, I have some serious concerns about our country and our state. It appears that politics and policy seem to be drifting farther and farther apart. Politics appears to be our new national pastime. Every word, every moment, dissected under a microscope, and the discussion has gone from someone's hair to even to the heels on someone's boots. Yet the discussion of public policy, not so much. And I conclude that policy is just not that interesting, not that entertaining, and therefore doesn't drive ratings very well. Politics has gone from the art of statesmanship to an arena of insults, ridicule, and showmanship. And the very concept of being a statesman, respecting the other side's position, treating opponents with respect, is no longer a cherished part of the American landscape. And that should be very troublesome to all of us. And the rhetoric on both sides of the aisle, or even in the press, when speaking about a president or a governor is now done with such disdain and disrespect that it's offensive to the office itself. Whether we are talking about Barack Obama or Christie, Chris Christie, let's keep in mind that they occupy an office in our government that deserves basic respect and basic decency. Thank you. And this venomous rhetoric needs to stop. If you have a problem with their policies, either the president or the governor, so be it. But hateful rhetoric repugn is repugnant to most of New Jerseyans and most of the people who live in this country. And if you, thank you. If you are a Republican and you hate all Democrats, or you're a Democrat that despises all Republicans, you have no business to be in public office. Our job is to address serious policy issues. 
And if your vision is so clouded with partisanship, you stand in the way of solving the most press pressing issues facing the state, then you should go. And to my friends in the media, sometimes there is no story. Sometimes there's no angle. Sometimes there's no bad faith. And maybe there's not even politics. There may just be legitimate policy differences. And, and I do understand that simply comparing the underlying policy differences is boring and will not win any awards. But it just might be the right thing to do. And furthermore, journalism is an art, and it should be treated that way. My friends in the media, you should not be co-conspirators in creating an atmosphere of distrust and divisiveness. It does not serve the common good. And if you see a campaign on either side of the aisle that wrongly attacks the character of a candidate and you fail to address the real issues, you are part of the problem. I submit that most New Jerseyans want us to govern from the middle. That means compromise between the ideas of Democrats and the ideas of Republicans. The loudest voice, the most powerful political boss, or the richest pack does not and never will reflect the position of most people in New Jersey, and never will. Now let me address some public policy myself. And to the speaker, a man of his word, a friend, and we've worked together well. But I am still the voice of the minority. And it is my job to articulate the differences in a nice way. So let me begin. We will stand up against using the Constitution as a legislative tool to avoid the veto of the governor. We will strongly oppose unfair redistricting plans that make New Jersey a one-party state. And we, will, thank you. and we will clearly express our concerns about the cost of living or dying in New Jersey. And once again, I respectfully request that all of our 80 reform bills be posted as soon as possible, Mr. Speaker. Let's agree today to make New Jersey a state where we can afford to live, work, retire, and die. And to myself, or for myself and my caucus, we will continue to advocate for smaller government, lower taxes, fair funding for all schools, and school choice. We will always rely on the individual over government. We have the confidence that if you give New Jerseyans the opportunity to succeed and get government out of their pocket and off their back, that New Jersey will succeed. The creative entrepreneurial spirit and generous spirit of the people of New Jersey is the most effective path for long-term success. Thank you. God bless New Jersey. God bless the United States of America. Nominations are now in order for Speaker of the New Jersey General Assembly. I recognize Speaker Emeritus Sheila Oliver of Essex County. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There are many ways to define there are those that describe leadership as the only ship that doesn't return to port when there's a storm. Others have defined leadership as having the courage to swim upstream when the current is going in the opposite direction. Vincent Prieto, who has served as our speaker in the 216th legislative session, has demonstrated the characteristics and the ability to fulfill both of those definitions. But more importantly, he has served as a leader 
of inclusion. There are 79 other members of this legislative body. Each one of them is co-equal in importance of opinion and of participation. I believe that Vincent Prieto has demonstrated a recognition of that description. And for those reasons, he has put us on a course in the New Jersey General Assembly, which is welcoming of continuation. He has been a strong leader. He has been inclusive. He has recognized and taken into account all of the people of this state, whether they live in Salem County, Burlington, up to Sussex, Morris, or Hunterdon. For these reasons, Mr. Chairman, it is my pleasure and honor to place the name of Vincent Prieto into nomination to serve as the speaker of the 217th legislative session. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Assemblyman Moyo, why do you rise? I rise to second the nomination. If there are no other nominations, the chair will entertain a motion that nominations be closed. Assemblyman Eustace. I move that nominations be closed. Hearing no objections, so ordered on the election of Speaker Vincent Prieto as Speaker of the New Jersey General Assembly. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Andrew Zack. Mr. Off. Mr. Barclay, Mr. Benson, Mr. Bremnick, Mr. Bucco, Mr. Bergicelli, yes. Mr. Brown, Mr. Caputo, yes. Ms. Caridi, yes. Ms. Shapiro, Mr. Chivalada, yes. Mr. Chitterelli, Mr. Clifton, yes. Mr. Conaway, Mr. Coughlin, yes. Mr. Dancer. Yes. Mr. Danielson. Yes. Mr. D'Angelo. Yes. Mr. Dagnan. Yes. Mr. DeMeo. Yes. Ms. Downey. Yes. Mr. Egan. Yes. Ms. Egan Jones. Yes. Mr. Eustace. Yes. Ms. Gove. Yes. Mr. Greenwald. Yes. Mr. Giblin. Yes. Mr. Gossiora. Yes. Ms. Hanlon. Yes. Mr. Holly. Mr. Hotelling. Yes. Mr. Howarth. Ms. Jacy. Yes. Ms. Jimenez. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Keene. Yes. Mr. Kennedy. Yes. Mr. Lagana. Yes. Ms. Lampett. Yes. Mr. Land. Yes. Mr. Mazio. Yes. Mr. McGuckin. Yes. Mr. McKeon. Yes. Ms. McKnight. Mr. Moriarty. Yes. Ms. Mascara. Yes. Mr. McCurgy. Yes. Ms. Munoz. Yes. Ms. Moyo. Yes. Ms. Oliver. Yes. Mr. O'Scanlan. Yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Ms. Phoebus. Yes. Ms. Pinkin. Yes. Ms. Pink Ms. Pinter Moran. Yes. Mr. Prieto. Yes. Ms. Keanu. Yes. Mr. Rival. Mr. Romana, Mr. Rumpf, yes. Mr. Russo, yes. Ms. Rodriguez Gregg, Mr. Cher, yes. Ms. Sapizi, yes. Mr. Singleton, yes. Mr. Space, yes. Ms. Spencer, yes. Ms. Sumter, yes. Mr. Talaferro, yes. Ms. Tucker, Ms. Veneri Huddle, yes. Mr. Weber, Mr. Wimberly, yes. Mr. Wisniewski, Mr. Wolf yes. and Mr. Swicker. Yes. At this time, the Honorable Stuart Rabner, Chief Justice of the New Jersey Supreme Court, will administer the oath of office of Speaker of the New Jersey General Assembly to Speaker Vincent Prieto.
I, Vincent Prieto. I, Vincent Prieto. Do solemnly promise and swear. Do solemnly promise and swear that I will faithfully. That I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly, and justly perform all the duties, perform all the duties of the office of speaker, of the office of speaker of the New Jersey General Assembly, of the New Jersey General Assembly, to the best of my ability and to, understanding, to the best of my ability and understanding, that I will carefully preserve, that I will carefully preserve all records, all records, papers, papers, writings, writings, or property, or property, entrusted to me for safekeeping, entrusted to me for safekeeping by virtue of my office by virtue of my office and make such disposition of the same and make such disposition of the same as may be required by law as may be required by law that I will support the Constitution of the United States that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of New Jersey and the Constitution of the state of New Jersey and that I will bear true faith and allegiance and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same to the same and to the governments and to the governments established in the United States established in the United States and in this state and in this state under the authority of the people under the authority of the people so help me God so help me God congratulations Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor that I bring to you the Speaker of the General Assembly, the Honorable Vincent Prieto. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, dignitaries, family and friend, from each of us up here every one of my members behind, we want to express our gratitude to the residents of the state of New Jersey for electing us. Your issues are our issues, and we will not forget. I want to thank my family uh, first and foremost, um, especially in this last few weeks and few months is when you really see how difficult sometimes it is juggling so many things at the same time, and normally the brunt is, is by the family. My wife probably will tell you that I had almost a cell phone surgically implanted in my ear almost about for the last four weeks or so because it's a 24-7 job. So I want to thank her for putting up with me uh, through this time. In these last two years have been an awesome experience, but for the time that we have been together. I have here today my world. Uh, my children are here. That, that's what I live for and that's why I do this job. And when I got up on stage and I looked down and I saw my grandchildren brought tears to my eyes because that is, and you can hear the little one, uh, that is what drives me to make sure we make New Jersey a better place to live for all of us, for our future. And that's why it's important to me. And in some of the speeches you heard not kicking the can down the road, that's the reason, because we don't want to burden them with problems that we create today. I want to just acknowledge a couple more people because they're very special to me. Uh, my brother-in-law, Joel, he's like my brother. Um, we've been together for such a long time. He was my partner. Uh, we've gone through a lot of happiness, joy, sad times. Um, so I just, you know, the love, it's like my family. It's like if it was my brother because it's, uh, he's so close to me. He's closer than actually my brothers. There's two other people sitting in the front row that are my extended family, Joey Muniz, and Steve Katuna, thank you for all you do for me. And I know there was one gentleman that was supposed to make it here in his friendship, and a lot of people miscategorize it as a political thing, and his uh, mayor and state senator, Nick Sackle, that he's a friend of mine, and I couldn't, you know, uh, his friendship means the world to me. And as the minority leader talked about, sometimes there's not a story in a lot of things that people write and think, so I can assure you of that. 
It's incredible journey that I have had to get here, and the last person that I want to, you know, acknowledge, and which I always do all the time, is my mother for the courage and love that she showed for me and my other brothers later as she was able to extract them out of Cuba, but she brought me to be able to fulfill this and give me a better life and live the American dream. And some people ask me why I sort of, I have a smile on every day. My wife sometimes will tell you that's a lot different, but I normally do, and it's always a sunny disposition in my mind for the reason being what a wonderful country we live in. And she's no longer with us, but I know she's always looking down on me to make sure I do the right thing. I want to start by welcoming the new members to this awesome, awesome body. It's the People's House. You are given a task by the residents of the state of New Jersey to do the people's work, and that's what we do. In our separate caucus, we deliberate. We actually talked about issues, and I can tell you, we don't always agree whether you're in one house or another, and I imagine on the Republican side it's the same. I don't have any spies, so I really don't know, but I would assume they do the same robust conversations that we have, and that's so important for the process that we do. And I can tell you, we just went through an election cycle, which I can tell you, if I want to show my stripes, we, on the Democratic side, were very successful and are going to have the largest majority since 1979 with 52 members. How Thank you. However, that I can tell you, we have 79 members behind me, and every one, as Speaker Oliver said, each one is co-equal, and we're going to try and do the best that we can for each and every resident of the state of New Jersey from each and every district, because they're very different, very diverse areas that they come from the different parts of the state of New Jersey. So. At the same time, I'm proud that my caucus has grown, but I am proud to be able to work together also with the minority leader and the minority party to get to somewhere in the middle, as I've always talked about, the art of compromise is very important. We we have, I, in my caucus, we have an exceptional team with uh, Majority Leader Louis Greenwald, Budget Chair um, uh, Gary Scher, and our Conference Chair uh, um, uh, Shavanda Sumter, um, and our Speaker Pro Tem, um, uh, Jerry Green. We try to do the people's work. For the state of New Jersey, we have had a tax problem for the longest time. Property taxes have been the highest in the nation. But I've been fighting the battle for the last two years and trying to get everybody on board in reference to make sure we take care of our transportation trust fund that you probably have heard about that it's coming at the end of this fiscal year out of money. We have a crisis. We need to take care of it. I actually early on made a tough call of something we need to fund it, and it was a gas tax. It's not a popular idea, but actually the way I proposed it was to create some tax fairness and be able to see how we can do something across the board that we can do other taxes to help everybody because it is a very large state, there's a lot of different issues, but our transportation trust fund is first and foremost, it's the first domino to getting to the problem that we have. We need revenues in the state of New Jersey. Our infrastructure is crumbling. The state of New Jersey as a corridor state, that's what makes us attractive to get businesses here. And if we actually invest we will create jobs, and then those people will be able to buy goods and services, and it will be a bubble-up economy, which we need to do in a really, really desperate way. I have talked about potentially phasing out an estate tax to be able to do this. We did something yesterday. I know in our House it passed unanimously. We put a constitutional amendment to dedicate existing and any future revenues 
for the Transportation Trust Fund that they be constitutionally dedicated. So not just this legislature, future legislatures can't touch that money. It needs to go where it has to go. It can't be used for anything else. And I was proud that it was bipartisan support. It came out unanimously. And that will be on the ballot this, come, this year. I think that'll show good faith to the voters if we do have to do something, and nobody wants to pay more money at the pump. Nobody does, especially gas has gone down. We're enjoying that. We want to make sure that we actually are fair to everybody. We need to make sure that we take care of our transportation trust fund. But that also ties right into property taxes. A lot of people don't understand the state of New Jersey back to municipalities, about $264 million a year for road projects in those particular towns. If we have a problem with the Transportation Trust Fund that we can't fund it, these municipalities then would have to raise taxes, and that would be direct property tax hikes to the residents that can't afford it. Property taxes go up every year. It's a beast that you can't feed. Every 2% is half a billion dollars. And municipal uh, growth for municipalities is 2%. We capped it up. That's half a billion dollars every year. So we need to do better. We need to make sure we give a quality education for our children, that that is so important to all of us. And while we try to achieve that and make sure we do it in the best way so every district every district is properly funded and not underfunded, we need to figure out how we can get that accomplished. Last year, I, two years ago, I stood on this podium and talked about vocational and technical education. We did great strides and reforms in that aspect that we put a package of bills together that are now the law and they're working very well to create an employee for the future what the state of New Jersey needs and partnering with businesses to see what that is. And we put the tools and resources in their hands. College affordability is something that should be afforded to everybody, no, no matter what you make. Everybody should be able to go to college. I started college after two semesters. I had to leave for the reason of affordability. So I can relate to that, how to go to work. It was difficult. So we want to make sure we do the right thing. In this past session, this assembly behind you passed a lot of college affordability bills, but unfortunately never made it to the governor's desk. There was a task force uh, created, and I am waiting to see what reports they're going to give us and what suggestions to see if we can use those to pass legislation to make college more affordable to everybody. And that's something that's important to us. We need to make sure we have affordable housing. We need to work on affordable housing for everybody. I always talk about affordable housing. Everybody thinks it's somebody poor. A lot of times in the towns you live in, your children grow up, and then they can't live there because how expensive it is. Affordable housing has to be a component for children to be able to stay in their communities and be able to stay where they grew up. So I think that's something we have to work on. So that's something that's very important to us. We talk about gun violence. Gun violence is an issue that we have in the nation. It's something we have to look at. And more importantly, the aspect of mental health. And we have to figure out how we can help as government uh, entity to facilitate to get better and do the right thing to make sure we keep guns out of the hands of the people that shouldn't have them. So that's something that we really have to work together, bipartisan, across the two aisles. There is, it's incredible in the state of New Jersey, about 8.8 .8 million residents, more than a million people live below the federal poverty line. That's unthinkable. Um, and when you add a livable wage that swells up to like 2.8 million residents, that's almost a third. That's not acceptable. New Jersey is a wonderful place to live. It's an expensive place to live. You can make a good living sometimes, but it's been rough for us coming out of this recession, and we have lagged behind all other states. So we need to 
work in creating jobs. So I am going to instruct all our committees to see what they can figure out to tackle not only poverty, but to see how we can do economic development to create jobs, because we need a balance. We need to give a lending hand to the one that needs it, but then there is the other aspect, the people that create jobs and have those jobs, those small businesses, we have to make sure we take care of them also. So there's a balance, a fine line that we have to walk. So we're gonna work together, and I can tell you, from me, I always try to do the right thing, and I know the minority leader had said, I, I keep my word, and I give a promise to all of you that I will work tirelessly. We will work and work as we did last night, and we didn't live here until we had everything done, because that's what we were sent to Trenton to do, do the people's work, and I assure you, we're going to get to the root of the problem and make New Jersey a better place to live for each and every one of you. Thank you, God bless. God bless each and every one of you. God bless New Jersey. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Speaker Prieto, Majority Leader Greenwald, and all of the members of the 217th New Jersey General Assembly, we would like to thank you for joining us here today. Reverend Floyd White of Woodland Avenue Presbyterian Church in Camden will conclude our ceremonies with a benediction. If we ask you to please stand. Reverend White. Before we have a benediction, I'm very grateful to be here this afternoon, especially want to congratulate everyone behind me. But I want to also congratulate Arthur Barkley for when I came to Camden some 20-something years ago, Mr. Barkley was in my first youth group. He was 13 years old. I'm grateful to be here, to stand here, and to applaud him in the work that he would do today. May we bow our heads in prayer. God of grace and God of glory, we're thankful for this day. We pray blessings upon this assembly, their family, their friends. We pray blessings upon this state. And God, I pray for soldiers and airmen, sailors and Marines deployed throughout the world. I pray a special prayer today, God, for the New Jersey National God. I pray that your spirit will be with us in the days to come. And God, I pray that the members of this assembly will work together for the good of the people of the state of New Jersey. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And God, I pray that the members of this assembly will continue to do the things that are right in your sight and not right in their sight. For today is a day that you have made. I rejoice, I give thanks unto you for the opportunity to be here and give the benediction at this great assembly. In God's name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. On behalf of the speaker and the majority leader, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your attendance today and good afternoon.